Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. It is episode 32, and we're continuing our playthrough of Chrono Trigger. We just finished mopping up Magnus, and uh, we we ended up back in the distant, distant past in 65 million BC, and found out that the Reptites came and destroyed the peaceful village, and we're about to enter the fight of our lives. Before we went into that, though, we hopped back here to the end of time. We did our little thing with Spicchio to uh, to get the magic capsule and the, all the special stuff that comes from beating him at each form. Because remember, if you get to him at level zero through or one through, there's no level zero. Yeah, one through nine, he has one form, which we didn't see because I, I didn't want to drag out all the fights at such a low level. Uh, to make that happen. I highly encourage you try that on your own, though. So then there's the other one from 10 through 19, which we saw. And then 20 through 29, which we just did. Which means when we get to level 30, he'll be a new form. And he'll offer up a fresh set of prizes for you. You only get it once per banded of levels. So kind of keep that in mind as we go. And also, if you're watching live, this is a reminder that uh, when I get done recording this episode, I'm going to stop the stream early, feeling a little under the weather. And um, and if you're uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, hopefully by Saturday I felt better and recorded the rest of the episodes as normal. Today, though, rather than getting too deep into the 65 million BC stuff, we're going to take a look at a couple of things, both in... Uh, we're going to poke around a little bit here and there and show off some of the changes that have happened. So if you remember Medina Village in 1000 AD, that's where the fiends lived. They were worshipping a statue of Magnus, and there was uh, all sorts of fun and interesting stuff. We're about to pop out the wardrobe, all, all Narnia-like, and let's see. Why is there magic in you? Magic using humans were supposed to have died out long ago. Medina's village of fiends, founded by our ancestors when they lost their war against humankind 400 years ago. Okay, so most of them still have a grudge against us. Keep that in mind. That is the residence we just came out of. Uh, let's hop up to the elder's house real quick. This work is brutal. They still honor the statue of Ozzy the First in the village square. Wait, Ozzy the First? Last time it was Magnus. Blast that Ozzy, always hiding behind his ancestral fame to boss us around. Hmm. A fearsome beast lives in the. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> We already took care of that fearsome beast, so... There, there is no longer a fearsome beast in the cave to the west. Alright, so let's go to the square. Because if you remember, this is where the statue of Magus was. And... Oh! It's a statue of Ozzy. Interesting. Now, th this is one of those... There are some really weird... Weird ways things change in this game because you got stuff like this where the only reason why it's different is because you interfered. Um, and some of the other things we're going to look at are things that are only different because you did something. But if we were to go using like the new game plus or if we ground up to a high enough level to do it and pull it off anyway, if we were to go fight Lavos now. Uh, before the next bit of quest that we have to do with Ayla, you get an ending that suggests that because you didn't do that part, history turned out very, very different. So it seems like there's some things that happen uh, only because you interfere. And there are other things that happen only if you don't interfere, which, I don't know, it, it's kind of an interesting, you know, I am sure some philosophy classes could make uh, a whole semester's worth of material out of just the, the very simple premise that's being executed there. So I just wanted to kind of draw to the attention of any amateur philosophers and uh, you know, c 
contemplate a little bit what that says. And we got different fiends moving around too. So we got Oh Great Ozzy. Hmm. Oh Great Ozzy, Ozzy the Great. Even those miserable sunny days abate when we see that lovely balded pate. <laughs> what about you? Oh, oh. You're singing Oh Great Ozzy. Hmm. Oh, great. Ozzy, Ozzy, great. Yep. So, different fiends are dancing than when we came in with Magus. And the warship's a little different. The statue's a little different. Just one of those things. Uh, is he still going to fight us? Or All right, I'll sell. Oof. Look at those prices, man. Now... Part of me wants to go, well, I got 232000 so I, I can pay some outrageous prices. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. That's better than anything I'm likely to have for a while, isn't it? Because right now what I've gotten is an attack of 70, and this jumps up to an attack of 90? Uh, I'm about to be rolling in some more gold soon Anyway, that's eh, only gold. We'll get one. And let's go ahead and equip. Why did I keep that slasher? Oh, because I haven't had a chance to sell it yet. Oh, no, 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 because I picked that up off a of slash. Dying. All right, so, and it does one and a half times damage to magical beings. Sweet. Yeah, so the Primeval Blade went attack of 70. We're up to an attack of 90. Always nice. And let's go ahead and... Can we sell the Slasher? All right, everybody's got a Ruby Vest equipped. Except me. Oh, we pick up a... All right. Um. Yeah, we need to clear out some stuff. All right, Iron Sword... That can go. Our Death Claw. That can go. Our Primeval Blade. That can go. Our Bronze Helm. That can go. Our Stone Helm. That can go. Bronze Armor. Can go. The Misty Robe. One of these two ladies needs to equip it. And the Ruby Vest is either as good as or already equipped on everybody else so let's go ahead and sell that let's back up let's equip and oh i've got two mist robes so that's going to go from a defense of 45 to a defense of 54. now here's the kicker as much as i like having the higher defense the ruby vest has fire damage and using my mystical ESPN, I know, <laughs> sorry, I know that we're going to want to have fire damage reduction for a bunch of stuff in, uh, it, okay, uh, for a bunch of stuff coming up. So, um, all right, I didn't mean to close all the way out of that. The luminous robes might be nice. The radiant plate. That's a defense of 64. That's right. He's got the dark mail. That's a 45. And the ruby vest has a defense of 45. But again, we're greatly increasing the defense value at the expense of the fire damage. So I might hold off until until we finish um, finish up uh, something else, and then uh, and then we'll then we'll go from there. All right, and no, that's the end. And the the forest runes we'll get to a little bit later. We do want to refresh that that is there. And I don't 
don't think he does. But, does he have anything new to say? Nope. Sure. Okay. Nothing new to sell. All the... Uh, no, we got 22 shelters. We'll be okay. Uh, we got 12 panaceas. We're okay. 21 mid potions and a bunch of potions. And everything else is a downgrade. Okay. Just checking. Especially since he's got better... <laughs> Better prices on the shelters and such. So that is one change that's a little bit different, and there's another one that I want to get to as well. Come on. Climb down the ladder. Kind of wish they gave you a shortcut through this cave once you beat it the first time. Like, open up a ladder somewhere or something. Nope. Oh. Doggone it. I thought that was the way out. The way out is down here. Yes. Oh yeah, don't forget that box. We'll need to remember that at some point. All right, there was our save point, although we don't really need it at this point. What we need is to jump into the vortex. Zut, zut. And let us go see the king, because something's going to be a little bit different right now. We'll skip the fights that are, you know, seriously. Ah, fine. He's going to start something. Guess what? I know exactly how to finish it. Boop. <laughs> Nuke him. Nuke him till they glow. All right, 10 XP. <laughs> I guess, I mean, there's three of them and three of us, and we could have actually done a... Oh, fine. A regular fight without burning the magic points. Fine, we'll do that this go-round. I mean, I guess there's no sense in burning the magic at this, at this juncture, except maybe for the time... Because it takes time to run through all the attacks and win for 9 XP and 3 tech points and yada yada. Uh, but one of the things that I will probably do Saturday before I record... Oh, Princess Nadia. You had me worried, Princess. I understand your feelings, of course. The king places his realm above all else. It was the same even when your mother, Queen Eliza, passed away. Oh, child, please forget I spoke. Tell me. It's difficult to speak of, even now. You see, Queen Eliza's condition had been frail for some time, but it took a sudden turn for the worse near the end. She desperately wanted to see your father just one last time. But your father refused, said he could not leave his work unattended. He left you, young, innocent, and knowing nothing of death, to watch over her alone. Naturally, the end was not long in coming. She died soon after. One might well say the king killed her. Such a shame. Oh, I see where this is going. Now the chancellor stirring up trouble? Hmm? Hmm? Father killed her? Oh, yeah. Please, I speak too much. Do not let it trouble you, your highness. Now that you finally returned, won't you go and see the king? <laughs> Now that I've stirred you up, won't you go and see the king? Since it's our millennial anniversary, the king has, for the time being, ordered probation for Chrono. His grace awaits his daughter's return, even if he appears upset. What else we got floating around the castle? I don't think we've had a chance to run around here just yet. Ah, uh, the millennial fail celebration is set to begin, but with the king in his current state. The doors of the court have been sealed at the orders of his grace the king. 
Hey, this looks familiar. Preparations for the fair's evening celebration are underway. Chief Cook's ancestors served in the war against the Fiend Lord. Serve food, I mean. As a wine man once said, can't wage war on an empty stomach. Hey. Oh, forgive me. I didn't recognize you, Princess Nadia. Oh, okay. I guess we're not going to get a meal out of this. For shame. Sorry about my wife. The old lady runs the kitchen. Gotta tread softly around here. She knows how to cook a goose better than anyone, but she's also got a temper that'll cook your goose. Seems to run in the family. Does it now? Who gave you permission to come in here? Out with you. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, ooh, we got a box. And we get a turbo ether. And another box that is locked. Hmm. Wonder what could be in there. What's up this way? What are you doing here? Do you want to be put on trial again? Well, not particularly, no. Alright, so we got that done. Let's poke around the other side now. Entry to the prison towers has been forbidden by the orders of his grace. Pierre awaits you downstairs. Pierre? The Chancellor hired all of the guards who manned the prison towers. Did he now? Because there were some fiendish looking ones. Fiendish indeed. The Chancellor may have been purposefully trying to influence His Grace's judgment in the courtroom. May have been? Did you see that? Those prison guards were an odd bunch. Even we would get cold stares from time to time, and those eyes, it's like they weren't even human. That's the subtlety this game is known for. <laughs> it was right around the time he ordered that dragon tank to be built. That was when the Chancellor started to act differently. I'm Pierre, Royal Legal Counsel. The king has been terribly distraught since the princess ran off. It took some time, but I was able to convince him that no kidnapping took place. The chancellor, on the other hand, he has been acting quite strangely. We were just discussing that now. Well, good to know. Nope. Looks like somebody looted that box about 400 years ago. Nope. Nope. Oh, <laughs> okay. I guess I'm not getting to the prison towers that way. Thought there was something else over there. All right. Only the Chancellor refused to believe that Krona was innocent. Without our princess, it's almost as though the light is gone from these halls. Aw. Princess Nadia. Oh, Nadia. What have you come here for? I thought you had no more use for this place. Don't you look at me like that. You're the one who stormed out of here. And letting these hoodlums in here. Are you planning to cause some sort of trouble? How can you say things like that? These are my friends. Friends? You're a daughter of the line of Guardia. Consorting with their like is a disgrace to the family's name. It's true, then. You really do care more about the kingdom than you ever cared about me or mother. What? You... you killed my mother. What? Get out. Don't show your face here again. Don't worry, I won't. Um... Hmm... Do as you please. You are not my daughter. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. We need our princess here. All right, let's, uh, what else we get? 
Princess Nadi is the very image of her late mother. I suspect that's why the king's always so strict with her. All right, let's try to hustle up here because there's one other stop I wanted to make before everything was done. Oh, look, a box that was looted a long time ago in the past. And a turbo either. I'm the personal tutor in charge of Her Highness's education. Hello, I'm in charge of the princess's physical fitness. I am in charge of discipline. This latest incident is all my fault. I should have been more strict. Mm-hmm. And a mega elixir? All right, let's see if we can uh, meet up the king real quick. And patch things over. Because he's just going to sit there going, Oh dear. Oh bother. And what can we loot here? An elixir. And that's that sealed box we got to remember. Don't worry, those mysteries will be revealed soon enough. His grace is deeply troubled by Princess Nadia. It's hard for a king to seek advice about family matters. Why ain't that the truth? After the death of Queen Eliza, Princess Nadia became his grace's entire world. Aww. What have you come here for? You have no business in this place. Well, okay then. Hmm. Alright, I got one more thing that I wanted to check on before we wrapped up today's episode. Oh. Let's wrap these guys up real quick. Bam. Done. Good. Got around that. We'll get back to this part later. What we need to do is, if you remember, a couple of episodes ago, we gave the jerky to the mayor's ancestors. So we went back, we bought the jerky, we went back to 600 AD. And the old lady who was looking for some spiced jerky, uh, we had the option to refuse to give it to her, to charge her for it and make a 100 gold profit, or to just give it to her. We just gave it to her, and she said something about making her family more, uh, teaching her family the value of generosity. And if you remember, this is the dude who'd pay 10 gold to cluck like a chicken. His family hated him and all that good fun stuff. And now we have, I wish my husband were just a touch less generous. I mean, it wouldn't kill kill him to save a little for us, would it? Oh, that's different. My dad is my favorite person in the whole world. That's different, too. I love my daddy. Help the needy, share and share alike. Thinking about making that the town motto. Well, isn't that different? That's a lot different from, I have so much money, ha ha ha. Everybody says daddy's magnanimous, but he says he's just big boned. Um, <laughs> I forgot that they threw in that joke. So again, this is another case where it's one of those things that it only changes because you did something. If you didn't do something, then no difference. Um... Yeah, I think we're going to want another bit of jerky at some point in the near future. I forget when and to what end. In the meantime, we're going to head back to the end of time to save it because we're going to need to go to... Um, we're need, going to need to go back to 65 million BC and continue from there. Uh, 
if I'm feeling up to it, I will grind up some levels just to get uh, get ahead of the power curve a little bit. <laughs> and maybe get everybody's tech up just a little bit more. Try to get some of the dual and triple techs ready to run. Because the, the news are not going to be as good an XP source for uh, very shortly. Especially when you start getting into four and 5,000 XP to the next level kind of deal. Sorry, 48, 41, 41. I mean, the, they're worth it, but they're not. Now we're getting at the the edge where they're... So it's a long grind for levels. Uh, the big pull for them, though, is for the tech points, because he is almost at his max tech. 602 tech points needed at 40 tech points a pop. That's not that far off. And oh, got it. there we go. I was like, I thought she had another one. Got it. yeah. So cure cure two's not that far off. That's to a single ally. Luca's getting her megaton bomb again. Not that far off. Frog is gonna get his aerial strike in like two battles with a new because we definitely need to get him caught up to the rest of the group at least as far as tech points go, if nothing else. Robo's really close to his rapid fire fist, which will open up some new dual techs and that sort of thing. So that that is definitely going to be uh, on the agenda. The question is making it happen. All right, so let's go ahead and save here. And this is what I'm going to say. Thank you for joining along so far. And if you're watching live on Twitch or Mixer, um, I apologize for not going my usual length. I'm calling it early because I am feeling a little under the weather. Hopefully, hopefully I'll be feeling a little bit better on Saturday. In which case, uh, I'll probably live stream the recording of the other four episodes because I normally do six episodes every Thursday and release them out throughout the week. So in other words, uh, the live stream is... Me live recording six episodes straight. It gives you the opportunity to chat live with me. So if you've got questions that you want more immediate feedback on, then watch live. There's links to Twitch and Mixer, which I simulcast to down in the description below. And, um, and so with all that, and, and oh, and if you haven't already, also subscribe to the YouTube channel. It uh, definitely helps the channel out, and you'll get notified when new episodes and content get posted. And so, um, hopefully, I'll have. <laughs> hopefully, YouTube folk won't notice a disruption in the schedule. That is assuming that I'm feeling better on Saturday. If not, I apologize for the uh, change in schedule. And definitely by next Thursday, we'll all be back on track. So, with all that said and done, have fun. Take care. And I'll see you next time, whenever that is.